So these people are absolutely delusional. So according to these people, the only thing that matters to Nintendo is getting Game of the Year. Yeah, yeah. This is the funniest thing in the world. The only thing that matters, and there's this guy posting about the Power World thing. You know, how Power World is woke pile of garbage, even though it's a Japanese game. Got so scared of Elden Ring, that's why, that's why I thought they'd raise the flagship open world game to next year. There is absolutely no proof behind this. Absolutely no proof that Elden Ring is the reason Nintendo do a Tears of the Kingdom. Okay, there is absolutely no proof. And also, if you look at Nintendo's schedule for 2022, Okay, Nintendo didn't have a release date for Tears of the Kingdom because they were planning to release it in holiday 2022. But it will have to compete with the new Pokemon titles, the new Splatoon title. Okay, Nintendo had these other two games coming out, these other two massive games that will have sold tens of millions of copies. Okay, because Nintendo is about selling copies, making money. Okay, Elden Ring will release at the beginning of the year. Okay. Well, uh, they released Pokemon Legends Arceus. Okay, that's what they released in 2022. Then they released Pokemon and the new, new new Kirby. Okay, they released the new Kirby game. Okay, so they released Legends Arceus. They released Kirby and the Forgotten Land and Tales of Sports. So they couldn't release. They only had these games coming out, so they couldn't release Tears of the Kingdom. They released Spyro, uh, some other games. They released New Zero Blade. They released Splatoon 3, Mario Plus Rabbids, and Bayonetta 3, and Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Okay. They released all of these games. Okay, all of these games. Well, could you put Tears of the Kingdom? Or uh, August, but that's too early. They could release it in December, like you have Smash Bros. But then they realized there was a massive opening. In 2024, no, not 2024, 2023. Well, there was they were releasing no, like nothing. Okay, they weren't releasing anything. Okay, so Nintendo released it to have that date. Okay, go to 2023. Nintendo didn't really have anything. Uh, they had a bunch of remasters come out. They had a van. They had really nothing, and then, and Pikmin Four was the only game they had for twenty twenty four. Pikmin Four was the only game as we now knew coming out. So Nintendo put Tears of the Kingdom in May, and guess what? It sold really, really well. Okay, Nintendo is a business. They want to sell the most amount of copies they could possibly sell. Okay. And also near the end of the year, they also released uh, Detective Pikachu, Mario Wonder, a new Wario game, and my RPG. Those are the games they had for the holidays. So Tears of the Kingdom fit perfectly on that May schedule. Okay. Nintendo did not do a Tears of the Kingdom for Elden Ring. They delayed it because they saw that they had that massive opening of that month. And obviously... They wouldn't have to compete with themselves, okay? And the whole game of the year thing, well, get over it. No one, no, no one gives a crap who wins game of the year. Because guess what? The game awards, the ones that, you know, hand out game of the year, is completely controlled by the journalists. It's what the journalists deem game of the year, okay? The, I know there's like a player's vote or something, but it's really... Who do the people think of what's better? Not who the journalists think because the journalists, they're going to give a game higher scores because it's more, you know, ESG friendly. Okay. Whereas Borders Gate 3 is more ESG friendly than Tears of the Kingdom. Okay. That's, you know, the facts though. Okay? They're going to give a game that's, you know, it was the most ironic thing <coughs> about Borders Gate 3 is that Borders Gate 3, you know, does promote, you know, more how we are not portrayed, how they used to be portrayed, you know. More towards the male gaze. That's what they used to be more, you know, how, but Boris Gay Free has a lot of more ESDs friendly than what to say, uh Tears of the Kingdom. And 
game that makes Pokemon look like a points it and turn it to community against them overnight. Not all the community. Okay, Pokemon is a massive community. Okay, Pokemon is one of the largest communities in gaming. But the Pokemon community has always been told against Game Freak even before Power World has come out, okay? The Pokemon community was told against Game Freak by the massive, okay, betrayal of Sword and Shield. Of course, most of the PokeTubers, they are going to simp for Game Freak until the end of time, okay? You know, the massive PokeTubers like, oh, you know, the, the Game Freak is the best. How dare you criticize Game Freak? And then the massive portrayal came with Scarlet and Violet, then releasing a completely broken and unfinished game. Which we told you so. Okay, we told you. Do not buy Pokemon Sword and Sealed. It's, you know, it's not. I did buy Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Because I generally thought that maybe Game Freak has redeemed themselves. Maybe Game. But no, they did. They betrayed us again. Okay. I played for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. It's the first time I ever actually played for a game that was gritty and buggy. I actually played for the game all the way. And there were so many times that the game just crashed, stopped working, or we went outside of the map. Well, I almost got soft rocks multiple times. Like, this is not a state a game should be released in. Okay. But, oh, today we're couple. It's time to admit and yield to the PC market will be absolutely over in no time. Xbox already did, so I did it the only way out for the title to bend over for gay Ben. Okay, first of all, the Switch is selling pretty well. Okay, it sold pretty well last year despite the rumors of the Switch 2. Okay, it sold pretty well in 2022 despite rumors of the Switch Pro. It sold pretty well in 2021 despite rumors of the Switch Pro. Okay, it seems that the Switch is a working market market model, and every week or say that the Switch 2, okay, it's gonna be like Another Switch. It's going to be the same console, again, but more powerful. It will be backwards compatible with the Switch. Okay. And that's about this video here. And, the, and these Nintendo haters is, are the absolutely most ridiculous people in the world. Like, like, these people are ridiculous. Okay. You know, I wonder what 2025 will be like for these people. And the rest of 2024, obviously. But yeah, that's about this video here. Goodbye.